Okay, so we are at the Wallen Fit Studio, Control Your Health, and we are not live for 40 Fit Food. We are probably out somewhere traveling. So, but we still are committed to giving you your 40 Fit Food episode every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Um, what are we talking about? <laughs> I'm going to give you a hint. I don't know if you see what's happening behind me. But we're talking about balance. Specifically, I think we wanted to address our... Or lack of. Yeah. We wanted to specifically talk to some of our Tai Chi practitioners. So, in addition to teaching Kung Fu at the Wallam Kung Fu Temple, we also teach Tai Chi. And a lot of the people who come in, one of the main things they talk about is balance or lack of balance. That's right. Yeah. So during Kung Fu and Tai Chi, actually, we find ourselves on one foot at a time. And actually, from an athletic perspective, you guys always talk about actually most movement. Oh, yeah. All, most athletic endeavors, most athletic action start, happens on one leg. One leg is when you're taking off running, even jumping. Like you're, most people don't stop and then jump. They're moving from one position. They have, they have to transfer weight to one leg and then jump. Kicking is the same way. Um, so it is rare that the bulk of your physical activity will be done with pushing off of two legs evenly. Unless you're a rower. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why it is so important to actually have that balance, even though during Kung Fu and I mean, actually, especially during Kung Fu and Tai Chi, you find yourself on one foot longer than some of these other sports. Sometimes right. these other sports, they're much quicker movements. But still, if you have that balance to be able to maintain a position on one foot for an extended period of time, that means when you're doing the quicker transition, it should be even more solid, even more connected, right? So yeah, it should translate. It should translate, exactly. And so for Kung Fu and Tai Chi, especially though, when we're you know focusing on our defense of just even the golden chicken, this has to be solid. This can't be a block if you're teetering and falling right. over, and then you can't execute a good kick if you're coming from an unbalanced position, right? right. So uh, balance is super important and there's a lot of different mechanics that we're gonna go over and some tips that'll hopefully help you out in, in maintaining your balance. But I think we were talking about a quick test first. Right, so a great test is you should be able to lift your leg, doesn't matter how high it is, but you should be able to stand like, on one like leg. Like is okay? Yeah, you don't have to be like our Kung Fu golden chicken super high stands, but you should be able to stand on a leg one leg for at least 10 seconds. And if you can't, if you can't even pick up your leg and stand for one second, one, it's either a severe lack of strength and balance in that leg, which, which that's, it's possible. But two, it could be something neurological. You might have to see a doctor, not to scare anybody, but if you're not able to just hold your leg, stand on one leg for 10 seconds, that, that's a serious, um, that's something that's of serious concern, especially if you're over 40, <laughs> but for anyone. But uh, a great way to start thinking about how we can then build up our balance, okay, is we've talked before about the three-legged stool that you can make the bottom of your foot. So the bottom of your foot, the knuckle under your big toe, the knuckle under your pinky toe, and your heel. Three legs. Tripod. Tripod on the floor. And one way to start doing that is you can start visualizing or pushing, not your big toe, but the knuckle under the big toe, the knuckle under the pinky toe, your heel, shifting side to side, if you can pick up your toes off the ground, you're also gonna start strengthening the muscles at the bottom of the foot and building an arch, right? I'm not talking about gripping the floor, just kind of feeling that. So that's the first step, is can you feel those three points of contact? Because what I do find is when we, in Tai Chi or Kung Fu, we're trying to lift, someone's trying to hold it for a longer period of time, one of those three legs is the fault. If one of those three legs breaks, that's the fault. So what I do find is that when someone loses their balance when they're on one leg, is that it's one of those three legs is off. Okay. And mostly I find- One of the three points of contact. Yes, one of your three points of contact, our virtual three-legged stool, is one of those three legs is off of, of that three-legged stool. Most of the time for me, it's the knuckle under the big toe, because I find that people kind of start rolling their out to the side and that's where they lose balance, but I don't know if you feel- Yeah, I feel like it's similar. For, uh, for me, particularly in the Kung Fu side, I always tell my students, one of the things I notice also is they're always trying to balance up versus like really sinking into their hips and rooting down. And we can get into that in another podcast, but I think you had some good basic exercises to take them through to kind of help yeah. test and also to enhance the balance. Yeah, so initially, I, you know, 
even up until recently, we always talked about ripping the floor. Mm -hmm. I think there's still value in that, but I also think there's value in what we just talked about, which is finding those three points of contacting, spreading that load, and just seeing if you can balance without the toes gripping. Mm -hmm. I think you should practice both. However, here's the way you can practice for your, your uh, start thinking about your balance. First is you should be able to pick up your leg. You've passed the 10 second mark. Good for you. You've checked both legs. Check. 10 seconds. Quite a question for them, like we should pre be pretty even, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I can balance on one side, but not the other. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're talking about 10 seconds on one and 15 on another, that's cool. If you're talking about 10 plus seconds on one and <laughs> nothing on the other, then that is definitely uh, okay. an issue. Obviously, we all have more dominant legs, right? right. Okay. So the next step then for your balance is you've picked up your leg is to close your eyes because now your only form of knowing where you are in space is the feedback you're getting from the floor. And it should be coming through that I'm a little bit off balance. Like, not off balance, yeah, but I'm fighting it. Yeah, you can actually feel it. like the leg shaking perhaps, yeah. like really to stabilize. It's like your stabilizers turn on. Right, yeah. so now if you're not able to hold your foot up with your eyes open, don't try with your eyes closed, <laughs> unless you've got something to hold on to. If we've got to take a step back, then I would say even just finding something to be near and lifting the leg, and having something to kind of just use there for a little bit, but not to depend on it forever, right? We need to progress forward. Okay, so I think those are the three best ways to introduce it. We can take it to the next step. This is a, this is something that we do in my kettlebell class at the Wall and Fit. Kettlebell classes on Saturdays is a nice warm up exercise because it turns on the nervous system. You having to fight for some balance. So I'm going to demo it. And awesome. You can, Try to push me over. You can point at you. You can point at me and be like, yeah, look at what's happening here. So maybe the best angle would be if I'm this way. We call this our towel kneeling position. It's also the same position that I was in a lot of times as a child because of my strict Catholic upbringing. This was my punishment, punishment, punishment position. Yeah. Anyway, tall kneeling position, the first thing that we're going to do is you're going to place your hands behind your head. The reason I like this is because you're just maintaining an upright torso. It's kind of easier to be like this, but if you would think, push those elbows back so they're in line with my shoulders or my ears, behind my ears, and that'll maintain an upright torso. And what I'm gonna do is just demo this on with my left leg forward. So just that alone, first step, is testing my balance. If you're not able to lift, removing one of the joints, right? So this should be easier than if you can't lift. So this is the first step. Can you get to this position? Already, things are fired. We don't have to name those muscles. Then we're gonna test that balance more by if my left knee is forward, turning my right elbow towards me. All right, and then- Just let me know when to push you. <laughs> right, and now I'm gonna start transitioning, and this requires leg strength for me to come up into my high knee, or what we call golden chicken. However, the difference being that I like people to practice what we call dorsiflexion, flexing the toes towards the shin, and now we test our balance even more by trying to reach my opposite elbow towards the knee, Reaching forward, a single leg deadlift. Don't push. <laughs> Coming back up, high knee, and then reversing. Opposite elbow, stepping back, control, opposite elbow, and then back to my starting position. And then obviously we want to do the opposite. Right, so the question there is if people are like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. You know, and then they yeah. do the, the the tipping thing, or even if we're in this position and then there's like, yeah. this starts to move out, how strict do we get and what does that kind of interpret? So that's a good question. In the past, I would be like, no, <laughs> right? However, I think there's value in struggling. If you can sort of do this in, let's call it a half-ass way, that maybe sounds too judgmental, but if we're here and I'm just like, Ugh. Right, if that's what it looks like, I say do it. Do it as long as you're not putting yourself in danger where you'll fall or down feel or, pain, or feel any pain. Crazy, right? Because there is value in the struggle. If you struggle, then you're only gonna get better, right? right? So my right. next question is then, so if you can't even get from here to, you know, yeah, that, that so requires should you, just, should you just be working that part before you try to do the whole other part, like step one, step two, step three, um, or do you just try I, to kind of get through it and get better? Yourself? I think you try. You could try to get through it and use assistance where you need. Okay. That's actually a really good question because this requires a significant right. amount of leg strength. If you're not even able to hold up your leg here, it's unlikely you're going to be able to do what we call a split squat. So maybe you need something to hold on to to step up, and then your next step is the bring the knee up. Ball. Then you need help to come back down. Mm -hmm. um, 
because yeah. my thought process is instead of like struggling without it is to have that assistance to keep so your body can memorize a proper form yes would you yeah. say yeah i mean here at, at um at the studio when i have a client i have them hold on to something mm -hmm. hold on to something like these are suspension trainers are just excellent for that yeah. um because you can vary how much you're using them for and um and we can start using percentages like where i could tell my client hey you know what you're holding and using maybe 50 arms 50 percent arms 50 percent legs now let's try to get to 40 50. Right, let's try right. to get so to the right. um and there's a learning process there as well okay. so right. that's kind of the way that i would approach you starting to work on your balance and even if you have your balance try this other thing it's actually i always demo it on my good side um, but it's actually harder than it looks. Yes, <laughs> and please let us know. Send us videos. We'd love to see, um, give you feedback, and also, you know, answer any questions for you. And then after that, you can walk the plane. Actually, I'm so glad you brought this up. So this is only a two by one. So it's only one inch off the floor. <laughs> it is an excellent way for you to start it's practicing fun. your balance. Yeah, okay. Because... Just pretend there's lava. Yeah, what I always tell my clients is like, you're walking over lava, or you're walking over piranha-infested waters, whatever you're, you're most afraid of. And don't lose your foot. <laughs> but um, this is a, an easy and safe way to start learning balance because you are transitioning from one leg to another. And your sister, Tina, who has cerebral palsy, every single class she's walking this plank. And she's. Yeah, you're so mean. You make her walk the plank. She's quote unquote class. failing every time, yeah. but she's learning every time. She's like, okay, I'm going to tap with my toe. Right. And I'm going to. Now I feel, you know, so, so that, that type of stuff is really good is where you're, you're safely failing. Right, right. So, awesome. Well, you know, we are actually here live with you, but again, we are dedicated to bringing you these podcasts and to make sure that you're getting your 40 Fit and Foo information every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, if you have questions, let us know. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>